Okay, we're back here live at Oracle Open World. This is SiliconAngle.com's The Cube, our flagship program where we go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. We go where the action is, and the action is Oracle Open World, and we go talk to the, all the experts we can find, CEOs, developers, marketing people, anyone who's got some signal, I want to share that with you. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com, I'm here with Mac Shearson, the, uh, the president of TenGen. TenGen is the company that is powering MongoDB, the fastest growing database out there, powering big data analytics, all kinds of new back-end web scale companies and beyond. Uh, Max, welcome to theCUBE. Great, thanks, it's great to be here. This is uh, um, our, our place where we have a chat about what's going on, right? So uh, we call it the ESPN of tech, where we can you know, talk about tech like a sports, uh, sports show, because we love tech. So um, you guys are growing like crazy. So first, tell the folks out there about TenGen and about your company and just what's orbiting around you guys right now and the massive growth that you have. Sure, so uh, TenGen is the company that's behind MongoDB. So we started the MongoDB project, we've been building the product and uh, commercializing it and we're just really excited with the momentum MongoDB has, we're really excited uh, about the work that we're doing with our customers and the growth of the company. So we're now about 175 people. We have a uh, follow the sun support model with offices in Dublin, New York, and uh, Sydney for, for support, uh, and uh, corporate offices as well in, in London and uh, San Francisco, and it's, it's just been wonderful. It's been explosive. It has. So go back a year, how many employees did you have last year? Uh, we started last year with about 25 employees. <laughs> okay, I, I wanted to get that out there. Just, I mean, just if you look at the numbers, just sheer growth, you guys are growing, busting out the seams. Um, one, what kind of year has it been for you? So tell us in your mind's eye, just take us through last year. What happened and what's going on right now uh, for the company? Sure, so uh, we made a lot of progress with the product. Uh, so in the last year and a half as we've grown from 25 employees to 175. We've added a lot of the capabilities that enterprises need in the product, whether it's uh, things like journaling to improve the robustness, better capabilities for managing uh, uh, broadly uh, geographically dispersed de deployments in, in multiple data centers. We've uh, improved the concurrency in the products of products made a lot of progress, the company has matured a lot. So we've gone from three salespeople and engineers doing everything to help customers to having that 24 seven follow the sun support infrastructure um, and a team of people to service our, our companies around the world. Then uh, revenue growth has been fantastic and better than we expected. We've raised a ton of money as well. And, uh, probably, but I think the most significant thing is really the way that MongoDB is becoming accepted as a mainstream uh, tool for building applications and is being used, a year and a half ago, MongoDB was in use at, at places like Craigslist and Foursquare and Shutterfly, a bunch of uh, web companies. And now we're in use at some of the world's uh, leading banks and telcos and big government organizations as well as uh, cool web companies. Yeah, I mean, people I, mean, people I talk to, um, you know, the web scale companies, I don't I like to use the web 2.0 name because it's kind of dead, but you know, web scale, people who pop out of the woodwork or code in a way, um, love it because it's, you know, it's a good product, easy to work with, right? But then you get the LAMP developers, the LAMP stack developers who just gravitate to Mongo. That seems to be kind of the general reaction to some folks I talk to, but then it scales. So you have yep. a scaling headroom um, to the point where it can go well beyond the expectations of what a prototype or a product could go. Um, and that's a good thing. You know, it's not hard to work with. That's been some, uh, uh, has been some positive. Some criticisms have been, it does break at some point, <laughs> like everything needs some real engineering. Um, so take us through the reality of that, those statements. And these are my, these are my opinions based on some conversations I've had, but so take, take us through that. One, is that true? about the ease of use of the product? Has that been some consistent, if not add, add to the color to that? And then two, the criticism of the breaking point, because everything does break when someone has to re-engineer things and whatnot. Sure, so, um, uh, so, so first of all, when, when we built MongoDB, the goal wasn't just to build something scalable, but it was to build something that would be really 
efficient and productive for developers to use. We didn't want developers to have to make a trade-off that says, boy, I think this application is going to get really big, so I'm going to use the really complex, painful, heavyweight thing, and this thing is just going to stay small so I can use something which is simple and appealing. Because the reality is when you start building an application, you don't know how big it's going to get. A and you never want to foreclose that possibility of, of explosive growth by the technology that you choose. But, but the, the other reality is there's two ways that you can foreclose that possibility. One is a technology that doesn't scale to the level that you need, and one is a technology that doesn't give you the agility to build the functionality that, that you need. So we, we, um, we looked at what was going on in NoSQL and said, yeah, by, by removing some of the features that can be impediments to scaling, we can build something that scales, but let's, let's think about really which features we have to take out uh, and which features we can leave in that'll make a developer's life productive. So, so I think the ease of use is absolutely accurate. I think that um, people do sometimes run into trouble, um, and I think that running into That's trouble That's natural though, people do at some point hit a ceiling, based on how well they architect, right? I mean, it comes down to that too. Uh, absolutely, and we try to make things as easy as we can for users, but, but you still have to plan for capacity, you still have to test, and uh, people don't have a lot of experience with architecting distributed database systems. So you know, one, one way that I think about it is running a single server of MongoDB is much, much easier than running a single server of Oracle. However, we also let you run 100 servers of MongoDB or 1,000 servers of MongoDB. And we've made that as easy as we've been able to, but it's still harder to, to run a 500 server MongoDB cluster than it is to one run, run one Oracle database. So we're going to keep working on it, and hopefully someday it's easier to run a 500 well, server let's MongoDB just, let's cluster. Well, let's just be fair. What's the price points? <laughs> the, the price point is much less, and, and I think the adoption mm. curve. Technology is, is tax much less. of Oracle is heavy. Mm. We were just talking uh, uh, before you you came on about the Oracle uh, with Dejre from Nutanix, and you know Oracle is serving clients that are like wealth, like you know, rich people. <laughs> they, they use they need like a wealth manager. They're not they're not scrappy uh, startups and or hyperscale companies. Right, well, Oracle, so. I think, has really done a good job of separating the underlying economics of how much customers pay them from the decision cycles of people actually choosing technology for a project. I can't tell you how many people that, that I talk to who think of Oracle as being free, and yet they manage to drive some very impressive margins that are, that are the envy of a lot of people in, in technology. So and I think They've, they've done that very effectively. Give me an example, give, give, what do you mean by that? Sure, so a um, uh, so big organization, whether, whether it's a government department or a Fortune 500 company, might do an enterprise license with Oracle where they pay them $50 million for all the Oracle that they can use over the next three years. So they're paying a lot of money, but each project team is freely able to use the technology without perceiving okay, that Okay, so yeah, yeah, so it's, they've already been paid the tax. It's, it's it seems cost. like open source to them. Exactly. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, so that's what we're up against, which means we can't win deals just by being cheaper. We have to be better. But I do think, you talk about the economics of Oracle, and I think the economics are fundamentally a little bit outdated. If you go back 20, 25 years, when I was getting started in, in this industry, people would buy an Oracle license for a couple hundred thousand dollars, and they'd run it on a VAX that they spent maybe $350,000 to buy. And so the $200,000 for the database made sense. You fast forward a decade or so, and you're running that $200,000 database license on a $70,000 Sunbox, and it was a little bit irritatingly expensive. Now, when it costs $200,000 for an Oracle license to run on a $6,000 commodity server from Dell, pe people think that's crazy. So we think the price point for the database should be similar to the price point for, for the rest of the costs in operating the system. Database shouldn't be 10 times as expensive as everything else. So you're balancing product development with um, hyper growth, 
mm -hmm. which means you got to deal with, you know, as a president, you got to deal with personnel issues. Mm -hmm. You know, HR, someone, you got to get rid of the good, keep the good employees, keep hiring great employees, get rid of the bad employees, you know, shuffle things around. Some people are young in their job, get some leadership. Mm -hmm. You get some, a lot, of, lot of things going on on the, on the operations side, Absolutely. same time on the product side, and the market's exploding. So in all three theaters, you, you're, you're pretty busy, right? So, Absolutely. Well, and you're a tech athlete by our standards. That's, our, our, that's a compliment, by the way. Um, so what's your outlook for the year? What's on your plate right now? Take us through your plans for the next six to 12 months uh, for, for TenGen and MongoDB. Sure, um, so uh, on the product side, we're doing a lot of work around things like security and auditing that are important to, to some of our largest users. Uh, we, we have people who've implemented uh, secure systems, whether that's for for intelligence or just security around financial data for Sarbanes-Oxley compliance, but we haven't made it as easy for them as we should. So we're going to do some work around that, as well as around making operations and management uh, of MongoDB easier. Uh, and then uh, from an organizational development perspective, we've gone from 25 people to 175 people in a little less than two years. We're not going to continue at, at that rate of growth. If we did for a decade, we'd probably have hire, hired uh, half the population of the United States. So that's got to normalize to, to uh, you know, maybe something in the 50 to 100 percent per year employee growth. And as we do that, uh, uh, the ratio of people who are newer will, will come down. The productivity that we'll have per head will come up. The processes will have time to sink in before they're broken again by the next round of, of growth. So, so I'm typing um, a little note here on Twitter. For, for people who want to go see the SiliconANGLE's Trend Connect report, go to slideshare.com slash SiliconANGLE and you'll find a report that we put out on big data in September um, on a proprietary survey tool we built that shows out of 170,000 sampling, uh, MongoDB is more popular than Hadoop for data scientists. So I want you to comment on that because that's a really relevant um, stat. Now sure. on, on the same survey, um, just to the hashtags here, on the same survey, IT professionals, Hadoop is more popular. Mm -hmm. In both cases, analytics is growing month over month in terms of popularity. So um, here we go. Hadoop, sure. Hadoop, HBase, Mongo, but ultimately no one talks about client server. They talk about the solution. So you can see the, the, the market changing. You guys are now more popular with, uh, by our data with data scientists than Hadoop. So observations, commentary on that? What do you think? Any, I mean, uh, what's your observation on that? So it, we're, we're, we're happy to see more people discovering MongoDB. When, when we built it, we built it to be applicable to a broad variety of use cases. And, and so it's nice to see that, that a lot of people are finding it uh, uh, to, to be a, a helpful tool. Hadoop's been out there for a little bit longer. It has, I think, a little bit of a head start in, in terms of popularity. Uh, and, and I think it's really useful for, for some of the really complex high-end use cases, we'd like Mongo to become kind of a go-to tool that, that people can use, uh, ranging from simple applications to complex. And we think that, that that's really important yeah. in, in building critical mass of usage. Well, we actually use HBase, but um, we haven't really played with Mongo because uh, we got some HBase jockeys on our team. But, but if you, my takeaway from the data clearly shows that you know, when you talk about data scientists, you're not just talking about math geeks, which they are. You have PhD developers who love the Hadoop and you have more of a higher end, I would call higher end, Hadoop kind of target audience in that, mm -hmm. in that community in Apache. You look at what Mongo's done, it makes sense, right? Uh, big data analytics appeals to fast projects. I got to get something on the board quickly. So Absolutely. that makes sense to me. Absolutely, the other thing is a lot of people use MongoDB in operational use cases as well. So, and we have a lot of joint customers with, with Hadoop. So yeah, at, at eBay, they use a lot of MongoDB and they use a lot of, of Hadoop. At, at Foursquare, all the check-ins, all the user profiles, all the venue information is stored in MongoDB. When you check in, it figures out which badges you earn by querying MongoDB. 
to, to, to find your check-in history, the check-in history at that venue. And they use Hadoop as well to do some of the analytics and trending behind that. So I don't view the, the two technologies as being an either or for, for a lot of leading organizations. They're going to use both, which is great. Got a lot of views on this report. I just put it up this morning. Already got 5, 471 views. Go to slideshare.com slash siliconangle and you'll see our exclusive proprietary original content. It's called Trend Connect. Trend Connect is our new research report we're putting out monthly in a lot of different verticals. This is a sample report on big data and it's staggering. We have looked at about 170,000 people um, looking at the marketplace and, and profiling their interests in the different technologies and uh, we are here with the uh, president of TenGen who's shepherding MongoDB on a rapid growth rocket ship as they say in Silicon Valley. Uh, final question because we're up on time. Um, What's the most exciting thing that's happening to you right now in your world around uh, TenGen, MongoDB, uh, and around you personally, and your outlook for the next year? Sure, uh, so uh, I, I talked to the head of architecture at a top tier bank uh, about their, their transition uh, of their data management platform, and, and that MongoDB is now one of their core data management platforms and all the organizational changes he had to go through to, to make that possible. And to me, the, the fact that it's not just you know, the, the Foursquares and Craigslists and Ebays of the world, but, it, but it's the top banks, the top telcos, big government organizations, is a key transition for our company and for the technology in the marketplace. Okay, Max Shearson, the president of TenGen, MongoDB. Folks out there, if you're watching Oracle Open World and you're familiar with the Oracle database, watch MongoDB, rapid adoption amongst LAMP stack developers and other developers. Uh, an alternative to HBase and Hadoop um, could be complementary. We saw Cassandra uh, and these other communities all kind of converging in on a rapid growing market. Congratulations on your success. Growing, they're hiring, they're doubling their staff. And uh, we have some news that uh, we will share shortly because I'm not allowed to break it because uh, I'm under friend DA with uh, some of your guys. But uh, great to know your company. You're in Palo Alto, California, and Variety, Lightspeed, great investors. No, no, not uh, Lightspeed, Ignition, right? Frank uh, Artali, is he in uh, there? NEA, and Sequoia, Union Square, and Flybridge. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Fly, I didn't know Flybridge is in there. I like yeah. those guys. So um, NEA, great firm. Sequoia, never heard of them. Um, <laughs> Flybridge, great firm out of the East Coast. I've been impressed with these guys. Uh, X Greylock, X IDC, great guys. And uh, Union Square. Union Square. That's Fred um, um, Wilson. Wilson and his team yep. doing all the great web startups. And then and that's Ignition. It. And yeah. Ignition. No. Fra Nick, no, Frank. Yeah. Ignition's not in. Okay. okay. All right, so <laughs> maybe I got that wrong. Well, anyway. Maybe so I need to talk to Ignition. Right? <laughs> <laughs> they, they don't have any money. They're raising a new fund. Yeah. Okay, so this is theCUBE. Which is where all the action is. TenGen, hot startup, growing like crazy. If you're looking for work, go, hot, go to them. They're hiring like crazy. Max, the president, here inside theCUBE. I'm John Furrier. We'll be right back after this break.